Hi guys, so today what we're going to do is show you this technique that I did back in about 1994 and they are just literally examples of trees for a project called Red Riding Hood and yeah, let's, uh, let's try it. So we're going to try this one, okay? This is a wax resist and uh, I'll show you how I did it. The tools I'm going to use, I'm going to use some acrylic paint just going to put it onto a sheet of blank paper, not too much, okay, put that out of the way. And then I'm going to use a piece of card, I've already had a little uh, dabble, just move this compass out of the way. And all I'm going to do is literally scratch it onto the surface of this middle weight cartridge paper, okay, nothing too heavy. But I don't want it too light neither because I don't want it to cockle. Okay, that should dry in a moment. It's not too bad actually. You get some wax. In this case, I'm going to use an old candle. And all I'm going to do is literally just put it over the top of the paint. Okay thick and liberal okay i'm gonna get my compass you can use a scalpel if you want but a compass is a, a better a medium a bit more tactile all i'm gonna do is just create that shape of the tree bit of cross hatch bit of detail just kind of they're dead simple marks but hopefully the artwork should throw th show through and I'm just gonna just scrape away here just kind of the, the forest effect okay I'm gonna leave it there I'm gonna get some um, Indian ink on a brush I tend to favor these nylon brushes they absorb the ink a lot more they're a lot more tactile I can get really thin sharp chiseled chiseled edges Okay, with this, but all I'm going to do is use ink, and this is Indian ink. Okay, so it's it won't bleed when it's dried, and all I'm going to do is put it over the top. It's not drowning the artwork. Okay, I want some of it to show through. If you put it on too much there, you can see what happens, but that's not a problem because you can create some really nice depths. Okay, so I'm just gonna put that over here. I'd usually put that in water, in fact. I've got some water here. And then what I'm gonna do is get my compass again, and you can wait until it's dry or not, but you can scrape into it. I'm trying to create a real eerie type of illustration. There was an artist in the 1950s and 60s working for Walt Disney, and he was doing a lot of the background art. His name was uh, Walt uh, Perigoy, or Perigoy, uh, P-E-R-E-G-O-Y. Check him out. He's responsible for, I think it was 101 Dalmatians, a lot of the backdrops, but a lot of his artwork inspired me as a student, especially as an illustrator, trying to create some really strange and bizarre things like this, I guess. Here we go, we can scratch away and create some shadows and textures. What's happening is the white is coming through as well as the yellow. But what if I was to actually put lots of different colours? And we've, we, we've played with this kind of idea in the past, you know, as a kind of a form of, and same with your kids, if you've got kids. But now as an illustrator or a designer, you should be working like this, you know, for real. Uh, Lucy and Day, the textiles artist, Again, if you look at some of her work, it can be not dissimilar to the textures that we're trying to produce here. So I always carry some tissue in my uh, toolbox as well, in case you want to take away any kind of other elements, because you can create a, a secondary texture. In fact, my thumbprint there might help and create some really strange effects, personal effects. Who knows? Okay. So that's 
the first technique that I'd like to show you, and that's it up close. Okay. That's just a tree, but what else could you do, you know? So the next one I want to do is this one. Okay, and what we're going to do is have a stencil cut out of paper. Here we are. Okay, and I'm going to use the same artwork here, okay? I'm just going to use this. Okay, and what I'm going to do is use this. Instead of a nylon brush, I'm going to use a stippling brush or a hog hair. They come in different forms, so you can have them round or again chiselled in some respect. Okay, flat. But this one's the one I favour. And what I'm going to use with this is some white paint. So that will obviously help pull out the uh, the light that I want. I'm going to use the same piece of paper. Just add a little bit there. There you go. Don't need a lot. This is a dry brusher technique, okay? It's dry brushing. So what you want to do is you don't want to put your paintbrush straight into it. You want to take a little bit at a time. Not too liberal, not too much. Okay, there we go. Let's see what this does. Now, this tree here, because it's quite faded, it might be a good one to have in the background. But if I was to create a darker one, so one right in the foreground, here we go, maybe a, a larger design would have been more fitting to show perspective. But what I'll do, as you can see, the paper is going to start to get a little bit deteriorated, a bit old, a bit battered. But for this, tip, for this we don't mind. I've used all kinds in the past, from acetate to plastics. And it does work. There we go. So you can create some really beautiful techniques. The obviously the other side of it is the cutout from that tree. Why not create some other effects? Okay, forest in the mist. Okay. There we go. So this is kind of a real, kind of a basic, but really effective technique that you can use. So this whole sheet has been produced by stippling effects, drawing over the top with Indian ink, masking off an area, for instance, wax resist, as you've just seen. Again, this technique is just literally a blue, um, a brown kind of stippling effect and just try and draw it with, an, um, with a brush pen or something in the background, some trees, kind of endor effect, <laughs> I guess. So they're just uh, some basic techniques, but what you could do, you could play with this for not only any project that you're working on, but the, uh, the pattern making project, as we discussed before, with uh, Transfiguration and uh, the Japanese prints. But yeah, check it out and uh, have a little play.